I'm here with Alexander Merkurs, editor-in-chief of the Duran. Alexander, we have some news coming out of Germany. Another globalist bites the dust. This time it's uh, Angela's, Angela Merkel's mini-me, her Angela Merkel light, is who I like to call uh, her, Miss Angaret kramp Kadenbauer, otherwise known as AKK. Let me read you a couple paragraphs via Zero Hedge on this breaking story. And this is a huge story, actually. And here we go. Merkel's successor unexpectedly resigns as CDU leader in latest shock to Germany's political establishment following a series of reports in the German and broader European press claiming her imminent resignation. Angaret Kramp Kadenbauer, better known as AKK, has confirmed that the rumors are indeed true. She will step down as the leader of Angela Merkel's Christian Democratic Union the center-right party that has ruled Germany for two decades and won't run as the party's candidate to succeed Merkel during the federal election to pick Germany's next chief executive in 2021. AKK reportedly resigned in protest over flirtations by the party's conservative wing to ally with Alternative für Deutschland or the AfD to achieve common political aims. There you have it. She is gone, and she is a victim of the AFD's success. At least Absolutely, that's how I'm reading it. So, Absolutely. Alexander, we'll get into the story. That's, that's, that's exactly what she is. I mean, she's also uh, been exposed, by the way, as a completely ineffective and weak uh, leader, and it's very characteristic of German politics over the last fifteen or so years that the person who finally knifed her was her own patron, Angela Merkel herself. Let's just unpack this because this is such an interesting tale. Firstly, we've had these state elections in Thuringia, which we covered a few weeks ago, in which the IFD won a big breakthrough. It, it, it won um, over 20% of the vote. It, it did extremely well. Uh, the dominant party, the biggest party in Thuringia, it's important to stress, is Die Linke, which is linked to, the, which is in a sense, the successor of the East German Communist Party. Thuringia, Thuringia is a part of East Germany. And between them, Die Linke, the left-wing party, and the IFD, uh, have more than 50% of the votes. Now, obviously, Die Linke and the IFD, they're actually, they have certain overlaps in their policies, but, you know, a, a, a coalition between them would be completely unnatural and it's not going to happen. So the, the assumption was that the uh, um, incumbent minister president of Thuringia, who is a man called Ramelow, would remain as um, head of the regional government. Uh, he's, a, he's the uh, a leader of Die Linke in the area and that he would just continue uh, but as a minority leader with the CDU and the SBD uh, supporting him as the situation arose. What actually happened is that a deal was done behind the scenes whereby the IFD, the CDU and the Free Democrats, who are Germany's Liberal Party, got together, ousted Ramelow, and supported the leader, the local leader of the F uh, of the Free Democrats as the new minister president of Thuringia. Now, what's interesting about this is that AKK, Annegret Kramp Karrenbauer, but let's call her AKK because it's easier. AKK told the local CDU chapter in Thuringia not to do it. And they paid no attention. They just went ahead and quietly supported this coalition. It is almost a coalition with the IFD. So she's humiliated because the local party in Thuringia is not listening and obeying her instructions. And what then happens is that Merkel, who conveniently is abroad when all this happens, then comes back, says this thing is absolutely monstrous. It is a ghastly perversion of democracy. We can't possibly tolerate it. It's shameful. I mean, words to that effect. That causes the new leader of the Free Democrats, who has just taken power in, as minister president in Thuringia, to resign, bringing down this new government. But in doing so, 
Merkel exposes the ineffectiveness and weakness of her own anointed successor, who is AKK. This is classic Merkel. Instead of backing AKK, saying, you know, they should have done, you know, they're, they're giving, giving AKK all the support that she can in this kind of situation, when AKK is being undermined by her own party, Merkel almost instinctively acts to undermine her. But what, of course, she has done, and what this has all shown, is that the CDU is fracturing. Um, the CDU, I should explain, in Eastern Germany is a somewhat different creature from the CDU in Western Germany. In Western Germany, it's basically a, a party dominated by the big Catholic, rich Western regions of Germany. And it's two important leaders, Konrad Adenauer and Helmut Kohl, came entirely out of that tradition. They were West Rhineland Catholics. In East Germany, the CDU is a party that was actually created during the period of East Germany and acted as a loyal ally of the East German Communist Party. When Germany reunified these the CDU in the East was reunited with the West, but it's always preserved some kind of independent identity and is perhaps closer in some ways to East German sentiment than the central party in, uh, 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 than the central party, the big West Western party is. So you see a rebellion by the CDU in the East, in Thuringia, which the CDU at the centre cannot hold. And you see also Merkel again uh, um, undermining and ousting her own anointed successor, the person she forced on her party uh, because she was looking to AKK to be the successor who would continue her politics. It's been well known for some time that Merkel has been dissatisfied with AKK. She hasn't found her uh, a strong enough successor, or at least a convincing enough successor, or a loyal enough successor, and she's now maneuvered to oust her, and that's what she's done. So treachery by Merkel, a rebellion by the uh, uh, CDU in the east, the rise of the IFD, and another sign that in Germany the center cannot hold. All right. What is uh, the reason for uh, the CDU's collapse, Alexander? What yeah. is the reason for Ayavdeh's rise and Ayavdeh's yeah. surge? The mark of a good leader is always in their ability to choose a good successor. And once again, we see that Merkel is a terrible leader because she has no idea no. who's going to succeed her. And my thought is she doesn't want anyone to succeed her because she's so vain and so arrogant yeah. that she can't possibly imagine herself not sitting in the chancellor seat. Well, that is her problem. But give us uh, your outlook for, for Germany right now as things stand, because things are really shaken up. Well, can I just say about Merkel? I, I, if she was described to me once as somebody who, who is both treacherous and loves power. And you've seen that in action over this affair. And you are absolutely right. She does not like to pick a successor. She's always been uneasy with the fact that she's had to coexist, if you like, with someone else, even if that someone else is someone like AKK. And of course, she went for the weakest, loyalist person she could find, who was AKK. Like a carbon copy of her, almost a like, a, like a really bad carbon, carbon copy of her. A carbon copy of her. And of course, unsurprisingly, this person failed to make any kind of impact. Now, the, the reason there is a pol growing political crisis in Germany, and this is a growing political crisis, is because of what Merkel has been doing over the time that she has been chancellor in Germany. She has moved the CDU to the centre, the absolute dead centre. Now, this isn't just um, centrism in the sense of being sort of moderate. It is a centrism of immobility. She, her policy has been to always go with the flow 
never to take on, you know, the really difficult, important decisions, but to preserve her popularity and to preserve her position as the leader of Germany, but never making any kind of radical changes, never fostering talent within the CDU, so as, you know, to bring up new people who might one day take over from her, never, as I said, to plan for any kind of transition, never to propose big plans for Germany's economic future or addressing the underlying and accumulating problems that Germany has, but always, in a sense, to preserve her own position. And the result of this immobilism is stagnation. Now, this is always so confusing because people talk about Merkel as a conservative. I don't think she is properly speaking a conservative. She, at least she's not a right-wing conservative. You, you can be right-wing and conservative and very dynamic. She is not any of those things. She's not very left. She's not very right. She's not somebody with any great vision about anything. But she is extremely skilled at keeping herself where she is. But in doing so, she is weakening her party as we see with the rise of, IFD, of the IFD, which is, by contrast, a conservative right-wing party, as the CDU used to be, and which is, as a result, eating away at, Merkel, uh, at the CDU's support. And Merkel doesn't have any real answer to this. She wants to keep the IFD in a, in a ghetto. But the people who are having to face the IFD on the ground in places like Thuringia, Thuringia and apparently there's also talk in other places, you know, of the CDU also, you know, facing the IFD in other places, they too are saying, you know, we, we've got to work with these people because if we don't work with these people, our regions become ungovernable uh, and we lose support. And you see, that even as Merkel's own popularity is sort of, you know, continues, because there's nothing about her that ordinary Germans, specifically in, in, her, in respect of her, can object to, the political system that she presides over and her own party are seeing their support drain away. So it, it, it's, it's a continuation, if you like, of a political system that is steadily breaking down and which Merkel has no idea how to change and no desire ultimately to change. What a contrast to that other most powerful leader in Europe, Vladimir Putin, who just a few weeks ago proposed a whole series of important reforms to uh, uh, the way in which Russia is run and has in fact uh, radically overhauled his entire government and has set new directions for how uh, uh, Russia and its economy and society should deliver, uh, should, uh, should develop. I mean, that is, if you like, systematic forward planning, which is something that Merkel never offers. Yeah, Merkel to me is, is being mm -hmm. left behind. Yeah. We're seeing right now in the world, a lot of countries turn to dynamic leaders. You know, yes. you have the Trumps, you have the Putins, you have the Salvinis, you have guys like Farage and Brexit, and even Boris Johnson seems to be picking up some momentum. You know, he's yeah. got, you know, a little yeah. bit of that fire now, at least yeah. that's what it looks like. Yeah. And, and you're seeing this move towards dynamism. And, you know, you have the elections, we just did a video on Ireland, mm -hmm. and you mm -hmm. have Sinn Féin now, you know, shocking mm -hmm. the world in Ireland. Mm -hmm. And it seems that Merkel is stuck in this neoliberal Obama mm. rat pack frame of mind. Yes. She's literally stuck there. She's stuck in the Obama years and she can't, you know, move herself or her party out of it. And she's yes. made, Alexander, very bad decisions. Yes. She's lost in Europe. She's lost Brexit. She lost on immigration. She loses yes. to Erdogan. She loses to Putin. She put Germany in recession. I mean, Everywhere yeah. she's going and everything she's touching are just losing. She's yes. losing on every single issue. And it's astonishing to see this happen because Germany yes. is the most powerful, strongest country 
in Europe and one of the most powerful, strongest economies in the world. It's incredible yes. to see this happening. Yes, but except, of course, the trouble is that because she's not, she's losing, and at the same time, as I said, she's not able to adapt uh, 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 and face the challenges that Germany has to face. That even Macron gives her challenges. Macron, and, uh, even people. Macron does, absolutely. But because she's not really rising to these challenges, the situation Germany ha is in is eroding. I mean, these strengths that Germany had accumulated in the decades before she became chancellor and which she has capitalized on are gradually eroding. I mean, Germany has no, uh, you know, cutting edge uh, internet companies, for example. It's nowhere in 5Gs. It's got no equivalents like, say, Russia has. Russia has Yandex uh, uh, and, you know, it, it, it comes up with all these apps like Telegram and whatever. I mean, you know, Germany has nothing like that. I mean, the Germans make the same things that they've always made. They make cars, very good cars. They make machine tools, but they're not really advancing in the new technologies as they should. And they've been landed, in my opinion, with a with an energy policy which you know eschews nuclear power it eschews fossil fuels it doesn't really make much sense and is drifting into ever greater dependence as a result on russian natural gas imports and at the same time merkel has managed to antagonize the russians and complicate this relation between germany and russia which is so vital for germany's interests so we have a situation where where merkel in order to preserve herself, has been dissipating Germany's enormous strengths. And at the same time, she's undermining Germany's long-term stability because she is not letting German politics play, their, play themselves out. Now, you know, I, I'm not going to give the IFD an absolute clean bill of health. I mean, I, I, I follow the party carefully. There are some people in it who I find extremely disturbing. But it does represent a political force in Germany. It seems to me that freezing it out in a ghetto like that, in other words, freezing out in a place like Thuringia, a quarter of Germany's voters is an extremely bad thing. You don't do that. You you involve people in the political process. You listen to what they say. You can you uh, understand the uh, you know the, the grievances you they have. Merkel isn't about any of that. She's not really addressing the political problems in Germany. She's allowing her own party to decline because the CDU is now in deep de decline. The other big party in Germany, the traditional party in Germany, the SPD, is close to collapse. So we are looking at a situation in a few years' time where Germany may find itself facing all kinds of economic problems and has a completely broken political system. It's not stability that Merkel is providing. It's stagnation and stagnation is, if you like, it brings about collapse. It brings about a state of decay. It's exactly, I was going to say that word. It's decay. It's rust. It's decay. It's rust. Exactly. And it's rust. I, I look at Merkel and I always think to myself, no one even wants to deal with her anymore. She no. needs to leave. Trump yes. hates her. Yes. Putin can't stand her. Salvini no. can't stand her. Orban no. can't stand her. Macron can't stand her. Boris Johnson can't stand her. Farage mocks her. I mean, where where yeah. can she go yeah. at this point? The only place she's safe is a corner office in Brussels, but next indeed. to Juncker and uh, Tusk and all those other yeah. husbands, yeah. the Guard and all of them. That's well, exactly. it. Exactly. That's she it. needs to. The CDU doesn't realize. The CDU does not realize that they need yeah. Merkel to go. Well, Isn't there anyone in the party saying, "Guys, look, guys, girls, everyone, look, <laughs> Merkel just can't stay anymore." Well, there are some, there are such people, and this is now the opportunity because, of course, with AKK gone, there's got to be another leadership election within the CDU. Because realistically, even Merkel understands that she can't become the CDU, you know, the leader again. She she can remain chancellor, but but she can't, 
you know, lead the CDU again. So there's going to be a new leadership election. And the question is, who is going to be the new leader? Now, I have absolutely no doubt that the correct leader for the CDU is the man called Merz. Now, I say that, I, you know, I'm not in any way recommending him or his policies. He may not be the kind of person I would vote for, but he represents change. And he wants to, he says he wants to bring the CDU back closer to its roots. He wants to make it a more right wing party again. So, you know, we have a return, if you like, to a real politics in Germany, a politics of the right versus the left, as we used to have, not this politics of a centre that offers nothing, a Merkel centre that offers no nothing. Now, this is the challenge. Um, you know, the CDU needs to think very hard about what it's doing, because if it continues along the line that it's taking, firstly, we could see more and more local chapters like the one in Thuringia starting to rebel against the central leadership and go their own way, which is what happened, which is really very remarkable. And, you know, for Germany, it's difficult to express how remarkable it is because Germans, you know, um, you know, are, are, are very conformist, politics in Germany is very conformist, very disciplined. It's unusual for a local party to break with the centre as radically as has just happened. But, you know, unless that, unless this changes within the CDU, unless it starts to redefine itself and break with Merkel and Merkelism and break uh, with its you know, recent centuries past and redefines itself as a more right wing party, obviously a democratic party, but a more right wing party, then I don't really see the point of it. Because it's what's going to happen is you're going to see more and more conservative and right wing minded people to in Germany drift towards the IFD. And you're going to see, you know, a reviving left as you already have in East Germany with the Linke. You might see it, you know, starting to take hold in other places in Germany too. But whatever, there has to be a return in Germany to real politics because this stagnation we have in Germany, this decay, has means that there is an absence of ideas for the country going forward. You can't keep things indefinitely as if, Barack Obama was still in the White House. Well said. Alexander McCurse, Editor-in-Chief of the Durand. Thank you very much, guys. If you liked this video, click on the subscribe button down below. Click on the notifications bell. Smash that like button. Look for us on iTunes and on SoundCloud for an audio copy of this video. And please donate to us on PayPal, Patreon, and Subscribestar. Your donation helps us fight demonetization. We are never stagnant. That is why we want you to go to our shop, pick up some merchandise, Absolutely. and help us out absolutely and in fact we are never stand uh, we're never we're not stagnant at all we're dynamic and at the same time we have uh, a german quality famous german quality in our goods though I, I i'm not uh, saying anything about their actual place of origin but i mean our, our mugs for example uh, our magic mugs our famous magic mugs i mean they beat all standards of quality they are light they are strong they are beautiful. They have this extraordinary luster that you can see. They don't chip or crack or break. Um, I've had this mug now for almost a year, and you can see that it is as good as new, literally as good as new. Um, it, it, it cleans beautifully. It keeps your tea or coffee hot or your beer cold, if you prefer beer. Um, and, of course, this particular one um, has the coat of arms of the Russian Federation, which is the Russian double-headed eagle. But we have many other magic mugs with other coats of arms also. And of course, we also have of equally high quality our various increasingly famous, dare I say, Durand shirts, all of them 100% cotton, like the long-sleeved T-shirt that I'm wearing, which keeps me incredibly warm and comfortable on these cold, blustery, wet, dismal uh, London February days. You see also that it's also got the double-headed eagle of the Duran, which is different from the Russian one that I showed you just now. But we also, of course, have not just long sleeve T-shirts. We have short sleeve T-shirts. We've got V-neck shirts. We've got really smart, elegant, amazing uh, polo shirts. 
of a sort you know that you can certainly take to the Apro ski as you know I was recently skiing or at least I wasn't skiing myself but I was walking I was in I was let's say I was in the Alps um uh, and going to these places you can certainly take it there or you can take take wear wear a polo shirt there or you can wear it towards all sorts of other incredibly smart uh, uh, places as i have done and we've also got of course other great things we've got hoodies and hats and stickers all of the same quality and it of, of the same kind of quality but in a different way we have our remarkable ebooks in which we enlarge on the topics that we discuss in our videos. So you can find all of that in the shop. You can support the Duran. We are having lots of problems getting ourselves you know, uh, established and across because we have all the pressures that an independent channel like ours invariably runs into. So you support us by coming to our shop. You become the proud owner of these great things. So don't hold back, come to the shop, support the Duran, be the proud owner of these great things, and Alex will tell you how. Go to the DuranShop.com. You'll find a link in the description box down below. Alexander McCurse, thank you very much. Until next time, everybody, take care.